I don't believe that the recording of We Are the Champions by Queen was made with the Cosmos in mind, but it sure fit like a well-tailored suit. With two titles in two years, the pressure was on for the Cosmos to keep the championship streak going. Whenever there's a top team in any sport, be it the Yankees in baseball, the Celtics in basketball, the Steelers in football, the Canadians in hockey, or the Cosmos in soccer, the opposition is always ready to show you their best. So let's take a look as the Cosmos go into 1979 in search of a third consecutive championship. In 1978, the Cosmos survived when Carlos Alberto's dramatic shootout goal provided the one last available breath to remain alive against the Minnesota Kings. History all but repeated itself in an unbelievable soccer marathon against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Cosmos Country. Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands was alive with the sounds of soccer all season long. Winners of two consecutive NASL championships, the Cosmos were in search of number three with the support of soccer's most loyal fans. Not only did the Cosmos play before more than one million spectators during the regular season for the second straight year, but over two million people saw the Cosmos in person worldwide. The opening of the season was punctuated with action beyond regulation time. Cenino's overtime goal defeated San Diego on the West Coast. Then two successive heart-stopping shootouts went the way of the Cosmos in Washington and Atlanta. The champions were rolling with seven wins in a row and nine successes in their first ten matches. Cosmos fans had new international stars to cheer for and Marinho captured their imaginations immediately with his daring length of the field rushes and a three-goal hat-trick in his first home appearance. Marinho provided all the offense in an exciting 3-2 victory over the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. The explosive speed and sleight of foot of Sinino added another dimension to the Cosmos attack force. Joining the Cosmos from Portugal's first division championship club in mid-1978, Sininho is another international star who has become a favorite in the Meadowlands. But the single most significant happening is the development of American talent. And the player who epitomizes the best is Ricky Davis. In only his second year, 20-year-old Davis is a star on the rise. Right now, I'm signed on an amateur contract with the Cosmos as compared to what most of the players are, professional contracts. And what this means is, is enabling me to play in Olympic qualifying games. But I began playing soccer at a very young age, uh, especially for Americans. I began playing when I was six years old. And I feel very fortunate because soccer was established in my area. I began playing it because I enjoyed the continual action, the challenges that it had brought up to me, and I was using my feet instead of my hands. Last year was my first year in the league, and I did spend quite a bit of time sitting on the bench. It was more of a learning year, and as far as my development, had been planned, it was something that I would have to put up with. I would have to understand that I'm going to have to take a set in the second seat to a lot of guys on the team. It changed from last year sitting on the bench to this year uh, playing in every game, and I think I'm the only one that's played in every single game. It's, it's an honor not only be able to play with the guys that I'm playing with, but to say that I've played as much as they have. As a young American, uh, sharing or playing on the same field as Beckenbauer, Bogey, and Mishkins, it's like a dream come true. I used to remember back in 1966 where I originally saw Franz play for the first time, and at that time I kind of idolized his style. 
Now Ricky Davis can analyze Franz Beckenbauer from a position on the same field as his teammate, while Franz has some kind words for his midfield partner. Ricky Davis, he, his development is tremendous in the, since the last year, and so he's a, he's a very important part in, in our game. And I enjoy it now very, very much to play in this team, especially in the midfield. I feel very honored that I'm able to play with these guys. And uh, I think that it's just a sign that American soccer will ultimately be some, something one day. Another American player who delighted the crowds with his scoring ability was forward Mark Liveridge. Liveridge was the Cosmos' third highest scorer with 10 goals and nine assists. When it comes to scoring, Giorgio Quinaglia is in a class by himself. The Cosmos switched to a 4-4-2 alignment on the field during 1979, and the direct result was more maneuvering room for Giorgio Quinaglia. In the 4-4-2 uh, situation, uh, France and uh, Dennis have always said about this. They've always wanted to play this kind of... Uh, formation but we've had a lot of problems in the past with other people that didn't uh, we didn't see eye to eye on, on this thing i think that the, everywhere in the world now they play 4-4-2 and if you have the the right man in the right position it's the best formation that you could have giorgio powered his way to 26 goals in regular season play and became the third cosmos player to be honored with a special day and the only thing i can say is i'm very proud and honored to be part of the best club and the best fans in the world. Thank you very much. Quinalia's running mate, Dennis Tuart, was the second highest scorer for the season with 16 goals. Tuart continued to mystify opponents with his quick moves and deceptive shots. A memorable highlight was the magnificent swerving shot over the keeper against the Portland Timbers. Ex-Cosmo Stevie Hunt led England's Coventry City in an international match against his old teammates. The Cosmo surprised the soccer world with an outstanding performance. Ricky Davis and Carlos Alberto gave the Cosmos an upset win, even though Quinalia and Beckenbauer were sidelined. The Cosmos won convincingly, and as Carlos Alberto explains, international matches have great significance. In Brazil, all newspaper, all radio, television talk, talk about the, the Cosmos team, not about Argentina. For the Brazilian, the Cosmos is better than Argentina. This is very important for us. Did Carlos Alberto mention Argentina? On June 6, the World Cup champions visited the Meadowlands. It was a night that crackled with excitement as a gala flag-waving crowd of more than 70,000 came to see the world's best. For those who figured it was just a question of how badly Argentina would beat the Cosmos, it was an eye-opener. The Cosmos played them dead even for 88 minutes. But Argentine captain Daniel Passarella headed this shot in with only two minutes remaining to give the World Cup champions a hard-fought 1-0 victory over a tenacious Cosmos team. Carlos Alberto was, as usual, the anchor man for a stingy Cosmos defensive unit. Voted the league's top defender for the second straight year, Carlos Alberto is poetry in motion. Mr. Dependable on defense, Carlos Alberto's offensive forays are few and far between. But when the moment is right, 
he makes his move with the decisiveness of a striker. One of Carlos Alberto's new teammates in the back line, Bim Reisbergen, was quite impressed by NASL soccer. In this first year, I see that it's, it's much, much better than, than I thought it was, and the, the competition is, is very tough. We have a lot of good teams now in this league, and uh, I think next year it will be, will be better. It's, it's not easy to mark it very, very close and very tight for 90 minutes. But it's, it's my job, and I, I like to do it for the, for, the, for the Cosmos. A star with the Dutch national team in the 1974 and 78 World Cup, Reisbergen was a welcome addition, as was the versatile Eskandarian. I think best player in the world now play in the United States, North American Soccer League. And it's very difficult, I think. I can play in the defense. Every, every position, but I play this season sometimes right fullback, sometimes left fullback. It's no problem for me. Eskandarian's efforts solidified a defense that would be without Captain Werner Roth out all year with knee surgery. Eskandarian, Marinho, Reisbergen, and Alberto were the Cosmos version of the fearsome foursome. Cosmos country welcomed yet another international superstar when Johan Nieskens joined the team in midseason. One of the major forces behind Holland's rise to soccer prominence, Nieskens has a five-year contract with the Cosmos. His fiery, hustling brand of play added an aura of excitement and intensity to every game. My job is uh, first to play well. I think a team must be grown together. You must be uh, uh, a couple of runners. You must be have uh, good players who give can give a good pass. You must have people who can score goals. And I think now, on this moment, I think uh, for the Cosmos, uh, we have the good people on the right places. Niskins blended beautifully, and the team was playing inspired soccer with a magnificent midfield of Niskins, Davis, Bogicevic, and Beckenbauer. 1979 was a trying time for Franz Beckenbauer. Sidelined by a knee operation at the very outset of the regular season, Franz spent most of the campaign rehabilitating himself, but late in the season, he was back in the lineup. Yeah, thanks God, it was my first uh, very serious injury, the knee operation. And uh, thanks Dr. Niklas, he operated the knee. Uh, my knee is 100% all right, and so I can play. So I'm nearly come to my old form. You know, I'm a really a soccer player and I love to play soccer. And if you, you have a rest because you can't play, I, I didn't play for three months now. And so I can watch the games from the bench or on TV and then makes your, your feeling very painful because I, I want to play. The fourth member of the magic midfield, Vladislav Bogicevic, rolled up assists in record-breaking style with a new Cosmos mark of 23 assists during regular season competition. The goalkeepers with Aero Yassin and young American David Bursich sharing the early season assignments combined as an effective tandem to frustrate the opposition. In midseason, Hubert Birkenmeyer joined the club from Germany to establish himself as the number one keeper with his good hands and quick reflexes. The Cosmos take to the air for a late season matchup with the Los Angeles Aztecs. Every time the Cosmos travel, the interest in soccer builds, and Los Angeles is no exception. A reception to welcome the team is wall-to-wall -wall people, and the incomparable Pelé is still magnetic. To many, this game represents a Niskins versus Kreif confrontation, ex-teammates, now opponents. No, there's an, a personal uh, confrontation, not, but it's, uh, it's not only in that, that he play in that game and I, we play 11 against 11, so it's Cosmos against L.A. Johan Cruyff's talents have molded the Aztecs into a contender. The Cosmos, back at full strength, are riding a four-game winning streak. A match is a barometer for both teams, with the playoffs only two weeks away. With the attention centering on Kreif and Niskins, 
Ricky Davis steals the show with two goals and a tremendous all-around performance as the Cosmos topple the Aztecs 3-1. The Cosmos finished the season with a flourish. Eight straight wins, first place in the Eastern Division, a new NASL record of 216 points. Indeed, the Cosmos are playing the finest soccer of their glorious history, peaking for the defense of their championship. The playoffs begin against a vastly improved Blizzard team in Toronto. Johan Niskins gets the Cosmos off and winging on the right foot. Nino's clever ball control sets up Ricky Davis for an insurance goal as the Cosmos defeat the Blizzard 3 to 1. The Cosmos return home with their winning streak now at 9 and the Blizzard facing the heat of Cosmos country loyalists rooting for the home team. Bogey and Ricky Davis feed Giorgio Quinalia with picture passing, and the Cosmos take the lead. Niskins and Bogey collaborate for a gorgeous give and go, with Bogey's return pass leading Niskins perfectly. Blank the Blizzard two to nothing and advance to the conference semifinals. Technical director Julio Maze and coach Ray Claveca have the Cosmos on a 10-game tear. But the Tulsa Roughnecks have ex-Cosmo Jack Brand in goal with high hopes of ending that streak in Tulsa. The combination of Jack Brand and a rugged all-out defensive performance turned the tide. The longest winning streak in Cosmos history is over. The Roughnecks triumph with a solid 3-0 shutout. Back at Giant Stadium, help is on hand. Jack Brand and the Roughnecks will face not only the Cosmos, but the largest crowd of the year. Down a game, the Cosmos must win to stay alive. Rip Tulsa three to nothing to tie the series at one game apiece and force a 30-minute mini game. The 76,000 plus fans have the Cosmos psyched up. Bogicevic penetrates the Tulsa defense and passes to Kinalia. Giorgio turns, shoots, and scores. Bim Reisbergen sends a beautiful ball downfield to Sininho. Sininho makes Brand to the ground, shoots. It's a goal. Kinaya adds a penalty shot goal, and the Cosmos roll up a 3-1 minigame victory to advance to the National Conference Finals.
the scenic beauty of Vancouver, British Columbia, tends to obscure the danger blocking the Cosmos soccer bowl path. The Whitecaps defeated the Cosmos twice during the regular season. Their determined style of play now accomplishes something no other team has ever done. Three straight wins over the Cosmos. Not only does Vancouver shut out the defending champs, but in the final moments, Escondirian receives a red card, and following the game, Carlos Alberto is suspended by the league office. Cosmos management contests with suspensions, but to no avail. On the brink of elimination, the Cosmos must oppose the Whitecaps without their defensive stalwarts. Down one to nothing, the Whitecaps capitalize on this free kick as John Craven scores. Zanino outraces the Vancouver defense. To Kinalia. Go! <laughs> Leading two to one, the Cosmos look for a clinching goal in the second half. But Vancouver's defenders hold on. Already hurt by the suspensions, the Cosmos are becoming decimated by injury, too, as Stewart and Niskins come out. Hoping to reach a mini-game as quickly as possible, the Cosmos are denied that desire as Willie Johnston angles a header past Birkenmeyer. The match ends at 2-2, and overtime is next. The Cosmos threaten repeatedly, but can't break the deadlock. The overtime is scoreless, and a shootout will determine the winner of the game. Hubert Birkenmeyer prepares for the first white cap shooter, Willie Johnston. Cosmos shooter. Parks makes the save. Birkenmeyer faces Bob Leonard Doozy. Beckenbauer will attempt to tie it up. Yeah! Birkenmeyer against veteran Alan Ball. Great save, Birkenmeyer. Seninho tries to put the Cosmos in front. Seninho just beats the five-second clock. It's good. Carl Valentine aims to gain a tie for Vancouver. Terry Garvin can win it for the Cosmos. Garbett's clutch shot gives the Cosmos a 3-1 shootout victory. The defending champions are still alive, but there's precious little time for celebration. The minigame is next, with the winner going to Soccer Bowl 
the loser going home. The Whitecaps attack with Carl Ballantyne booming a powerful left-footed shot that hits the crossbar and appears to bounce outside the goal. Vancouver claims it is in. The Cosmos say, no way. The crowd is stunned. The referee hears the Cosmos please, consults with the linesman, and finally rules. No goal. Moments later, it's the Cosmos' turn, with Beckenbauer and Mark Liveridge teaming up. The crowd celebration is in vain. This time, Liveridge is called for a foul, and the Cosmos' goal is disallowed. The minigame, almost won by both teams, is scoreless. And the soccer marathon continues with a second shootout. Exhausted physically and mentally, the Cosmos suck in their guts for one more do or die effort. The Whitecaps break out in front as Bob Leonard Doozy, Carl Valentine, and Derek Posse convert. Returning to the lineup in spite of a painful shoulder separation, Johan Nieskens typifies the gallant Cosmo. Yeah! Terry Garvin, the hero of shootout one, tries to keep the Cosmos close. Yeah! Trailing three to two. Hubert Birkenmeyer must stop Alan Ball or the Cosmos season is over. Oh! Birkenmeyer's save allows the Cosmos one final chance to tie the shootout. Nelsi Moraes is shooter number five. The exact same circumstance facing Carlos Alberto one year ago. Moraes' shot is in, but it's too late. The five-second clock runs out, and the goal does not count. After two games, one overtime, and two shootouts, the marathon of soccer is one second too short for the defending champions. The Cosmos' reign is over. True champions rebound from adversity. The Cosmos will be back better than ever with new stars, familiar stars, the guidance of world-renowned coach Hennis Weisweiler and a fighting spirit that will not be denied. More Cosmos magic is on the way. <laughs>